One-sample t-tests, also called single-sample t-tests, allow us to compare the mean of a sample to the mean of a population. And because we are using population values, this means that the one-sample t-test is a parametric procedure. Anytime we use population values, we are using parametric statistics. So the one-sample t-test tests whether a sample mean is statistically significantly different than a population mean when the standard deviation of the population, or sigma, is unknown. If we know sigma, the standard deviation of the population, we can use a z-test. However, this is very uncommon. And so most of the time, we estimate the population standard deviation from the sample standard deviation. And as we've just learned, this changes the nature of the test, and instead of using a z-test, we use a t-test. Let's go back to the example that we learned with the polar bears, who on the average walk 100 kilometers per day. But we don't know the population standard deviation. We do know that among our caffeinated polar bears, they walk an average of 150 kilometers per day and have a standard deviation of 9. We are therefore going to use that sample standard deviation value of 9 to estimate the population standard deviation value. Well, all of this estimation is something that we need to understand a little bit better. You remember that when we used a z-test, we used the standard error of the mean in the denomination. It was a measure of variability between the sample mean and the population mean. Well, the t-test estimates the standard error of the mean using the standard deviation from your sample. In the two formulas, you can see that the standard error of the mean that we used for the z-test is sigma, the standard deviation of the population, divided by the square root of n. But when we estimate the standard error of the mean, we divide the standard deviation of the sample by the square root of n, remembering that we calculated the standard deviation of the sample using n minus 1 in the denominator. So let's take a closer look at the formulas that we will need for this t-test. First, we need to calculate the standard deviation of our sample using n minus 1 in the denominator. And so we use this formula that we learned back in the chapter where we talked about variability. This is the standard deviation formula. What we will then do is divide our standard deviation of the sample by the square root of the sample size, and that will give us the estimated standard error of the mean. Finally, the estimated standard error of the mean will go in the denominator of our t-test after we subtract the population mean from the sample mean. And you can note these two definitions below for the estimated and the true standard error of the mean. Now that we have those formulas, we are ready to put them to work and try an actual one-sample t-test by hand.